I'm Nick Grove at the Morningstar Investment Conference in Sydney, and I'm joined by Brad Bug. Brad, in your presentation, you mentioned that you guys favour global equities over Aussie equities. Why is that? Yeah, that's right. Um, we do favour global equities over Australian equities at, at the current time. And the main reason for that is you know, the, the relative valuations that, that we see out there. But I think it's important to distinguish what is what are global equities. Um, we try to break it down as much as we can by region, by sector. So we're really trying to target particular regions or sectors rather than just blindly investing in sort of what a be benchmark might dictate us to. So, you know, in, in our portfolio, we're sort of have heavy weights towards emerging markets, Japan, um, countries which may not necessarily get a big weight in, in, in a traditional benchmark index. But that's where we see the opportunities and, and that's where we're, we're, we're biasing our portfolio, portfolios towards. And whereabouts are you seeing opportunities in fixed income? Um, in, fixed income is an increasingly problematic area. Um, day by day we continue to see yields fall. Uh, but here in Australia, you, you, you know, we, we think that sort of it, it, it's a generally supportive outlook for bonds. Um, we've obviously saw the RBA cut rates um, on, on, on sort of budget day, and we think there's a real prospect that you know they could cut them even further. And given that environment, we, we think it's a generally supportive environment for, 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 for Australian bonds. But when we look internationally, it, it, it's a little bit more challenged. I think. You know, a, a lot of the market is showing negative yields and investing in negative yields doesn't really make a lot of sense to us. And investing in the biggest part of the market, the US, there's a real prospect that US interest rates will rise. So um, you know, we're, we're tending sort of bias our portfolios to Australia over global at the current time. And Brad, in your presentation when you were asked about, you know, how investors should make their growth and defensive split, you, you kind of mentioned that well, these notions of growth assets and defensive assets need a little bit of redefining as such. And why do you believe that's the case? Yeah, that's right. I mean, we, we look at sort of growth and in, in income assets and, you know, what has traditionally made up those, th th those, those universes. But in an environment where ex you know, valuations are generally expensive, we believe that you're not necessarily going to get the same characteristics from certain a asset classes which you may have done done historically. So I think bonds are a good example of that. Government bonds, everyone used to rely on them to be the diversifier, protect your capital in a portfolio. But with yields so low, we're not so sure they're going to give you those same qualities. So we think it makes sense to you know, rethink where, where assets sit in your portfolio. And in relation to growth, growth assets, you know, with expensive valuations, they may not give you sort of the growth profile that you're after. So maybe looking at something which traditionally goes in a income or defensive bucket like emerging market bonds has a better place in your growth portfolio. Brad, thanks for your time today. No problem. I'm Nick Grover, the Morningstar Investment Conference in 2016.